Hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline and I'm the Community Science Outreach Coordinator for the Pacific Grove Museum of Natural History and welcome to our second Digital Science Saturday. I'm excited that everybody was here and wanting to learn how to draw a cool T-Rex and answer our dinosaur questions. Um, I've had lots of fun working with our education team, making all of our digital dinosaur videos and content. It's been a lot of fun. And I hope all of you have a chance to check those out for cool crafts and games and other activities. So today, with, today I have Charles Nye, who's actually a marine scientist for Mbari, but he, one of his hobbies is paleo art. And I'm gonna let him tell you guys a little bit more about what paleo art is. So he's gonna be leading us through um, an illustration of a T-Rex. I'm gonna hand it over to you, Charles. All right, can anyone hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me loud and clear? Perfect, hi guys. So uh, thanks for the introduction, Jacqueline. My name is Charles and uh, like you said, I am a researcher at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, but that's not all I do. I also do paleo art, which is basically um, science informed illustrations of prehistoric environments, animals, plants, and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, where you take the newest science of paleontology and incorporate that into a visual way. That's how uh, we get all these really cool new drawings of dinosaurs with feathers and things like that. So that's what I do uh, when I'm not working. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, been a hobby of mine for many years, but I've only seriously been pursuing it for the past maybe four or so. And I primarily do digital art. So I have this fancy drawing tablet right here that puts all of my inputs through a pen onto my computer. It's been having some uh, technical difficulties today though. So this ends up failing. We have standard pen and paper to go to because I have my uh, another camera here set up in the weeds. So if that doesn't work, we'll switch to a more uh, physical means of drawing. But yeah, we're going to draw a T-Rex today with a big bad king queen of the dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus Rex. And yeah. And thanks for the plug. My, uh, I do have an art Instagram, WordPress, and other fun social media uh, at the paint paddock. It's in my, it's in the chat window if you're interested. Uh, we are, we're only going through the one dinosaur today, the T-Rex, but I've drawn a few, <laughs> uh, a number of them over the years. So if you're interested to look at those guys and draw them yourself, go for it. Yeah, but uh, right now, whenever you guys are ready to get started, we'll see which way works best. Yeah, um, I have one more thing really quick before we dive into drawing. So for this activity, it'd be awesome if you had some paper and pencils nearby so you can follow along. Um, if you have watched, if you have any questions during the course of this um, activity, please write your questions in the chat. I will be keeping an eye on it and making sure that we ask those questions along the way. Um, if you've watched the Become a Paleontologist video, there's a virtual scavenger hunt slash fossil dig um, with a bunch of questions where you have to look through videos and find answers to solve a riddle. So if you've already done that, awesome, congratulations. I will be revealing the answer to that riddle at the end of this video, the very, very end. Um, and you can find all of our digital Science Saturday Day of the Dinosaur content on our website, okay? And let's, let's learn how to draw a display. Uh, T-Rex. Wow, there it is. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen with you guys. So uh, again, I'll be using some fancy technology uh, to do this drawing. But the first thing I like to do when I start any dinosaur or drawing is to break down basic shapes. So when you draw, draw lightly, because we'll be doing some erasing here and there uh, until the very end. So what I like set of shapes like this. So we have a circle, a nice little kind of S, this weird kind of rectangular shape, and then this other weird rectangular shape. 
copy that down very lightly. Um, this will be the framework in which we build our Tyrannosaurus Rex. Uh, if you squint and look very far away, you might be able to tell where we're going to get started, and that's going to be the main body and the head. And then we'll work our way to the tail and the legs. So uh, just follow along. If you, you don't be afraid, if uh, you're taking your time, uh, this will be uploaded again onto social media for you to follow through again if you don't. Uh, keep up as fast. That's okay. We all learn at different paces. So I'm going to start zooming in. Uh, you can't zoom in on your paper, but uh, for my purposes, I can zoom in and out to show you kind of the detail work I'll be doing. And instead of erasing full on, I'll be using some fancy Photoshop techniques. But let's start with the coolest part of Tyrannosaurus Rex, the part everybody loves, which is the head of T Rex. And so the head of a Tyrannosaurus Rex was as long as I am tall, which is a, a little bit more than five and a half feet at the very biggest. This was a big animal who could swallow people whole. Don't forget that. <laughs> so right now we have that circle that we drew earlier, right? And very lightly, remember, draw lightly, you're going to start kind of mapping out this kind of cross shape right here. And this will divide our circle into two halves, the top and the bottom, top and the bottom. And this top half, we're going to draw a little dot right here. So this dot is going to be basically the eye of the transfer. I just not, uh, I'm not uh, detailing it right now because we're going to go in and do more detailing as time goes on, right? So that's where the eye is. And now this kind of uh, corner of the, can you see my cursor guys? Yeah, so it's kind of corner of this weird oval circle shape. We're gonna start extending out into the snout. So you're gonna do a very gentle sloping line like this, kind of a, that kind of shape for maybe the same size as your oval. And then you're gonna start dipping down to form the rest of the snout. And now this is the, the top front part of the jaw. We're gonna start swooping this way towards the back of the head again. And this will also be a, a curving shape. You're gonna curve up, 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 and then start to make an S. So see how I curved up, up, up. Here's that part of the S. And we're going to connect it to our part of the this path, the other half of the circle. You could already start to see her take shape and that looks like the top half of a T-Rex head. And now let's do the bottom jaw as we keep going. So you're gonna just follow along. Again, take your time, no need to rush. I'll be taking my time as much as I can with you guys to make sure you guys get the best I can give you. So this jaw will be shaped like this. Now, T-Rex had really big jaw muscles, so this entire part right here that I'm kind of lining in, that's all what we, uh, I forgot the name of the muscle, but it lets it chomp down. Yes, we are drawing T-Rex. It lets it chomp down with enough force equivalent to a car falling on top of you. That's because T-Rex not only ate the meat off plant-eating dinosaurs like Triceratops, it also ate the bones crunched right through them. That's awesome and terrifying. <laughs> so there's your head of the T-Rex. Right now, we're going to detail it later. Let's move on to the rest of the body. Oh, well, actually, let's do the nose, which will be kind of right here. This uh, corner-ish area of the snout. Then the ear. People uh, wonder where the ear is on a dinosaur. If you follow your jaw all the way back, you will notice that your jawbone where the top meets the bottom is where your ear actually begins. So we do this similar uh, mapping to know where the ear is in dinosaurs, where the top jaw meets the bottom jaw, kind of back here behind the, the head is where the ear is gonna be. And there's a fancy anatomy name for that part of the ear, or part of the head. I don't know it, but there is one that exists. All right, let's move on to the rest of the body. So this neck, uh, not a lot of work you have to do here. 
just follow the same curve we made earlier for the S. Kind of maybe buff it out towards the end, but more or less just follow that line and you can connect it, this top circle to the T-Rex head as well. This part of the neck also helped with those massive uh, biting muscles as well. It carried that huge head and did a lot of the work because T-Rex, I don't know if you guys have ever seen a bird eat, but birds bite and pull. T-Rex, another large theropod, the meat-eating dinosaurs, would also tear and pull their food. Let's do the bottom as well. Uh, there's some debate right now over how fat dinosaurs are. When you see a lot of the older uh, reconstructions of dinosaurs, you'll notice that they're all really skinny. It's because uh, a lot of paleontologists and paleo artists were too afraid to put too much muscle and fat on these things. But if you look at modern animals, a lot of them don't really look like they're skeleton. So there are some liberties you could take with how fat or skinny an animal is based on some reason. You know, you, you don't want to make it super fat, that way it can't chase prey down. But also it's reasonable to give it some padding. So you don't want to ever follow the skeleton one to one. So there's your neck. Let's move on to the funniest part of T-Rex that everyone loves to make fun of, which is the chest and arms. So let the chest, you're gonna follow this uh, bottom part. Let's zoom out a little bit to show you guys. This bottom area we're working on right now, this will have the arms. But first let's draw that chest area and we're gonna kind of uh, do this shape. And then maybe right here, I'll start to do another uh, semi-circular shape. That's kind of a wrinkle to show where the shoulder and elbow, or the shoulder and the humerus are on the T-Rex. So that's your upper arm bone. So you have a humerus too. This is your humerus. So this is your humerus. The bone that's connecting to, the long bone that connects to your uh, thumb is your radius. And the opposite one is your ulna. And Tyrannosaurus had these exact same bones too. In fact, even though the arms of a T-Rex are very small compared to the body, they are as long as my arms are. <laughs> and they can lift up to 400 pounds each. So don't be afraid to make these arms muscular. They were used for something, despite what people might tell you. They were definitely being used for something. So we're gonna start drawing the arm, two uh, counterparts, and then we're gonna come down here Again, making it nice and bulky because these arms were used for something even though they're relatively tiny. And we all know T-Rex only has two claws at the very end of its hand. So follow me. So this part right here, this is where the hand kind of begins. And we're gonna draw one curved claw like this. Nice hook, nice and sharp. And then the other hook claw will come down like this again and hook it kind of the opposite direction. And I want to use this time to talk to you guys about how dinosaurs hold their hands. Who likes Jurassic Park? Raise your hand. Do you guys like Jurassic Park, Jurassic World? Yeah, you like those dinosaurs? They aren't holding their hands right, unfortunately. So dinosaurs couldn't do bunny hands. They, their hands weren't able to fold like this. They would have broken. Instead, dinosaurs held their hands facing each other. They were clappers, we call it. Clappers, not slappers. So a T-Rex, when walking around, doesn't hold its hands like this. She holds her hands like this. And that lets it grab things more easily. So if you want to grab something as a predatory animal, you don't want to grab it like this. What if it's too wide? You want to grab it like this, kind of giving it like a hug. So that's why their hands face each other. Clappers, not slappers. Remember that. All right. So those are the... I kind of made it too big, actually. Let me do some... Uh, Photoshop tomfoolery to make them smaller because they should be as small as my arms are. Don't be afraid if yours are too big or too small. You could erase and redo it. Just for the interest of time, I'll be doing some fancy uh, computer tech stuff. That's about, that's better. And we'll go over this again later on if we have time and I'll show you some detailing I can do for you. Let's draw the rest of the torso on the bottom, kind of following that original red curve I drew down here. And at this point, we're gonna start drawing the leg. So let's zoom out and I can show you guys where we are right now. So we've drawn the head, we've drawn the chest, and now let's start to draw the leg. So uh, T-Rex had really big muscular legs, as you can imagine. It was a big dinosaur, it weighed eight tons. That's as much as a big elephant. And yet it walked only on two legs. 
So let's start to follow this contour right here for the top part. This is the, uh, the femur. And this part right here, this kind of area I'm gonna circle for you guys, that's the knee. That's where we'll be detailing the knee. And then this back part right here, let's follow that same line as well. And that's kind of where the, the leg is gonna attach to the tail over here. So don't worry about those too much for now. So we have this, the formations of the leg, let's keep going. Now you're gonna kind of swoop in in a semicircular shape on both sides. But you're gonna stop before they can touch each other, a little while before they can touch each other. This is the calf. You have a calf muscle as well. If you reach down and touch your leg, that, that's the bottom part of your leg, that's the muscle you could uh, expand and contract if you flex it. And let's move down here, but the calf muscle stops a little way towards the back of this, the, this part of the leg. So you want a big calf muscle right here, but then it's a little bit skinnier down here. Let's keep following it. And now I'm gonna taper it off because now we're gonna draw the bottom part of the leg. So I drew those two uh, halves up here, followed it like this, and now we're gonna move down. This looks like a really weird leg, but it reminds me of some fried chicken. That's because uh, the chickens and birds we know today evolved from this kind of dinosaur, the theropod. So a lot of the bird traits we see today are actually from their dinosaur ancestors. So this part right here, that drumstick, is the exact same kind of drumstick you eat on a chicken, just much, much, much larger. And I imagine much, much harder to get. <laughs> It wouldn't go down without a fight. So here we have the bottom of the, the leg and we're gonna draw the feet now. Dinosaurs walked on the pads of their toes. So if you ever walk on your tiptoes, that's basically how a dinosaur walks. But we humans uh, would walk on the flat of our feet. So if you wanna do some comparative anatomy, this part right here of the T-Rex is the bottom part of your foot that you walk on. But instead of walking on that, they walk on their toes. And that helps them kind of spring forward a little easier. That's how a lot of animals conserve energy while walking and running. Uh, so look at this, how I drew the, the foot right here. I didn't make, if you're to look at the skeleton of the T-Rex, don't worry about this part. I'm gonna be just doing it some aside for you. The, the foot bone. People sometimes like to draw the claw coming out of the front. It would actually come out of the top instead. It's more like a nail than, a, than a, something sticking out the end of the bone. It's, a, it's like your nail, like your fingernail, more like. Just a nice aside, you guys are worried about that kind of detail. So it would be coming off the top of the, the toe and kind of curving in like this. And some perspective right here, so that's the, first, that's the middle toe. And over here, we're going to draw kind of the, the the toe facing outward, but because it's going to be coming towards us a little bit, it's kind of scrunched up, like perspective wise. So if you lift your hand like this, if I were to start turning it towards the camera, my fingers look shorter and shorter, but they're not getting shorter. It's just how the camera and how we see it looks. So there's the foot of the T-Rex right now as it is. A nice little pad right here going back up. Let's zoom out to make sure that we're staying in proportion, and that looks Pretty good, guys. One second, let me kind of see. Uh, let me see your pictures, guys. Where we are right now. That's cool. Very nice. I have a very limited view, but the ones I can see look phenomenal. You guys are doing great. Ooh, who's this? I like that one a lot. Good job. Okay, let's keep going. Let's talk more dinosaur stuff. And now let's move on to kind of rounding out this bottom part. The pelvis area is right here, so I'm making kind of a little dip to show where that pelvis area is. Don't worry too much about that if it's not something you're interested in drawing, but once they skeletally accurate, <laughs> something you should do. Now let's follow the back. Keep it nice and consistent with that oval you drew earlier. And this hip area should kind of be on top of the back. You'd be able to see the hip relative to the back. 
nothing to really talk about here. There's a hip and a back. But I do want to go back to the top of the animal to talk about a very contentious topic in paleo art and paleontology. Did Tyrannosaurus rex have feathers? The answer is maybe. <laughs> so right now we have evidence that T-Rex had scales. But those parts of the body that had the scales are the same areas in other dinosaurs where we see scales, but in other parts they had feathers too. So a dinosaur can be both scaly and feathery. But if you are to draw feathers on your T-Rex, it would be probably stuck to this, this kind of top half of the animal. And instead of looking like bird feathers, they would look more like fur. So let me do a quick aside to show you what that would look like. If I were to draw this T-Rex with some feathers around the neck and the back, let me erase this. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just showing you a good alternative if you don't want to do strictly scales. You kind of fuzzes up a little bit make uh, some very thin strokes, follow the contour, but not as much, because remember there's a lot of fuzz here. Give it, give it some, some small hairs. Give it like a nice, we call it proto feathers. We call it a proto feather mane, if it did have feathers. It would look kind of like this, but it would be stuck kind of the top half of the animal at the very most. Some paleontologists think T-Rex had no feathers, but the jury's still out. If you want to have feathers on your T-Rex, you can. If not, that's okay too. All right, let's keep going. This is the last big part of the T-Rex we're gonna draw today, and that's gonna be the tail. Uh, some T-Rex had really, really, really long tails. <laughs> other T-Rex had really, really short tails. Some T-Rex had their tails bitten off by other T-Rex. So the length of your tail doesn't matter. Just make sure it looks reasonable because like other living reptiles today, tail length is super variable in dinosaurs. So let's make sure it connects to that hip nice and nice and well. Just make a nice long set of strokes right here. Make a curve towards the end. Remember what I said about fat in dinosaurs? This tail could also be as fat or as skinny as you would like it to be, except for the base of the tail right here. So let's draw the base of the tail. Let's kind of round out. This is what that uh, pelvis still is. This base of the tail connects to some muscles that help the animal run. So if you want to make sure that base of the tail is nice and meaty to reflect that, you probably should. T-Rex could run maybe 12 to 15 miles an hour. That might not seem very fast to most people because your cars can go really, really quickly. You know, your car can go at 60, 70 miles an hour on the freeway, easy, right? But most people can't sustain 11, 12 miles an hour on a treadmill. So remember that dinosaurs didn't have to be fast, like speed demons. They just had to be faster than their prey. <laughs> so things like Triceratops probably didn't run very fast. So T-Rex didn't have to run very fast and chase after it. So this is kind of the shape we're going for right here for the tail. A nice kind of thick base, kind of tapers off. But again, this second half of the tail or second two thirds or so could be as thick or as slim as you want it to be based on your interpretation of how T-Rex should be muscled. So I'm gonna zoom out now and let you guys kind of catch up and I'll be doing some refinements here and some fancy Photoshop magic. So don't worry about those refinements, but just for the sake of brevity, I'll be fixing my own work here. So I do digital art because it lets me, helps me fix some of this work that I do um, not to say that physical art isn't a way to go. People, physical artists are still very common in paleo art and in modern scientific illustration. So if that's your speed, you should totally go for physical art if you want to be a scientific illustrator. Let me go ahead and erase some more of this tail. I'll be working on it like you guys are. And in a minute, I'll zoom out, let you guys take maybe two or three minutes to make sure you guys are caught up to where we are at the moment. And at this stage of the dinosaur that I like to erase my guidelines, those are the red lines that I drew earlier. So if you want to get rid of those very carefully with an eraser, get rid of those red lines. I'm going to do some magic. There they go. <laughs> so I'll let you guys take a moment to catch up. I'm going to go take a drink of water.
I can't, I can't unmute and you take me off. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, cool. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, muted myself because I was drinking water. I know some people have a, kind of a thing about hearing people drink or eat. Uh, okay, so we're back. Uh, let's continue. Uh, thumbs up again if you guys can hear me okay. Okay, cool. So let's zoom in again. Let's uh, do some detailing on the Tyrannosaur right now. I'm gonna raise some of my guidelines here that I forgot to put in the other layer. Don't worry about that. All right, I kind of made this jaw a little bit too square at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that too. Okay, so I drew my T-Rex with some lips, but not the same way we have lips. Our lips can move. You can do that all you want. It's gonna look great, I promise. But our lips can move. Uh, reptile lips cannot, at least not in the way that we do. So their lips are relatively immobile, but they can be moved by force. So when a T-Rex bites into something, those lips will move up as it sinks its teeth in. But when it's not using those teeth, they're well hidden. Um, my tablet's acting up. Okay. Now let's do some detailing on the head, because that's going to be a fun part to do, I think. So T-Rex had a very fun set of scales, kind of on the muzzle area. These are, I'm going to draw on the side to show you guys. These are kind of shaped like this. Very uh, long hexagonal scales. On the body, on the on the muzzle, they look kind of like this. So these uh, scales were used to protect the face because T. Rex, like other theropod dinosaurs, bit each other's faces in combat. We have skeletal remains of many meat-eating dinosaurs that have injuries on the face from this behavior. This is something that modern reptiles do as well. So give your T-Rex some very nice pronounced scales on the front part of the mouth. It needs it or else it's gonna get all scarred up and broken. But over here, this kind of part of the T-Rex, you'll see a lot of paleoartists or paleontologists uh, show this hole, this kind of like uh, depression in the skull. If you guys are familiar with how dinosaurs are typically drawn, you wouldn't really be able to see that in a living animal as long as you look really closely, so don't worry about that hole. I'm just letting you guys know if you see a T-Rex with some sunken in parts of the face, that's what it is, but you really wouldn't see it. This part right here, that's kind of part of the, I guess the mouth that I depressed downward, that's actually a horn, a hornlet. So this is a, a kind of a, a cheek horn that stuck out of the side of T-Rex's mouth for display. So if you want to kind of round that out, I like to do some other feature scales around it to really like give it some oomph. So there's the, the jugal horn, we call it, right here. Now, let's do the eye. While you guys are doing that jugal horn, let me talk about T-Rex's eye. So a lot of dinosaurs had their eyes facing outward, like a cow. So if we were to look at a dinosaur whose eye were face, was facing outward, the eye would look like this, right? You see the pupil, the iris, and all that stuff, just like that. But T-Rex had a very special adaptation. It had binocular vision. Uh, if you guys were here during last Science Saturday, uh, we had a nice lady come talk to us. She showed us some mammal skulls whose eye sockets were facing forward. Binocular vision, like you're holding binoculars in front of you. That helps with depth perception. And that's super important if you're hunting prey. So T-Rex having binocular vision means its eyes are facing forward. So the eye would be facing us and the viewer like this, we, it'd be kind of off to the side. You'd see part of it kind of like that. And then the iris and the pupil would be like this more so. So let's draw that in our T-Rex. Let's, let's give it some nice binocular vision so she could see properly. There she is. She looks nice. <laughs> and now we are done with the eye. T-Rex had some very fun ornaments around the eye. Behind it, we had these hornlets as well. 
this kind of array. I have this kind of triangular shape, the circular shape. And now the other shape, I kind of cup the eye in like this. That is another set of hornlets that T-Rex used for display. And it looked really cool on living animals. And I'm also going to draw something on the ridge of the nose. So T-Rex had on the skeleton, if you look at the skull, had very rough skin or rough uh, texturing on the top of the nose. Uh, that lets scientists know that it was growing something on top of there, a keratin growth. Keratin is the same material that your hair and fingernails are made out of, or like rhino horn. So there was this kind of uh, tall structure sticking out of the top of a T-Rex's skull also probably for display. So I make it kind of a ridge, a very thick, tall ridge that kind of makes it, makes the skull look taller. Some paleontologists or paleo artists will make this ridge super tall, others will make it super thick and wide, but show something is there because we need, we know something was there for T-Rex. She's looking good, guys. Can I see now? Show me your T-Rexes. Beautiful, beautiful. You're all gorgeous, wonderful people for drawing a gorgeous, wonderful dinosaur. Cool. All right, let's get going. I'm gonna add some wrinkles to the back of the head to show that the skull meets the neck a certain way. Don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I like to do this. Okay. Another really cool thing about T-Rex that is a great reason why we chose to draw this dinosaur instead of other ones, is that its scales are actually too small for you to see uh, from this far away. So Tyrannosaurus scales were only about a millimeter wide, one to two millimeters wide at the very widest. If you're not thinking in metric, because they don't teach metric that well in America, that's very tiny. <laughs> so if you're this far away from a T-Rex and see the full body, don't worry about detailing the scales because you can't see them. And that's okay. All right, let's move on to the neck. Uh, I will add these wrinkles here kind of like a monitor lizard or like a snake or some other kind of reptile would. Very uh, veiny, thick neck. Speaking of neck, let's talk about how T-Rex might vocalize. If you watch Jurassic Park, Jurassic World, we have the big T-Rex who roars whenever she does something awesome. And that's basically every time she's on camera, she does something awesome. But actual Tyrannosaurus probably didn't roar in the same way that mammals roar. So mammals have specialized vocal cords for roaring and making those vocalizations, but we don't quite know yet what extinct dinosaurs use to vocalize. But at the very least, they could hiss and make booming calls and things like that. Uh, would that sound like a roar? Maybe. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference, I think. I know I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a nice booming throat call or an actual T-Rex roar. I'm running as fast as I can, no matter what. I'm adding some more feature scales. Uh, about what I said about the scale size, on the body, they're about one to two millimeters on the head, where there's a lot of ornamentation and structures. You could have some artistic liberty with how big the scales are. So I like to kind of make give the head more character in that way, because it makes sense. If they're showing out the big keratin snouts and those horn lips and showing off to mates and rivals. That's the part of the, the body that would be the most decorated. All right, remember, rest of the body, not very many scales. It should have wrinkles. It should have areas where the animal will bend and contort and stuff. So one big area I like to draw wrinkles around is where the, the femur and the, those uh, hamstring muscles would meet against the belly. T-Rex had a really round body, so I kind of make a round set of wrinkles like this. Another fun thing I like to give my T-Rex on occasion are scars, because why not? We know this dinosaur fought itself and other dinosaurs very often. This is my voice a bit, sorry. <clears throat> so we know T-Rex fought each other. Remember I said about those uh, feature scales on the head. So I like to give it scars on the body as well to show that maybe she's gone through a few fights. And there's also scientific evidence from fossils that T-Rex preyed on other big dinosaurs like Triceratops and like those duckbill dinosaurs that live around it. There are preserved fossils that show that some of these dinosaurs got away 
so that T-Rex hunted prey, but it didn't succeed every single time. And that's important to know that because before we found these things, there were big debates whether T-Rex was full scavenger or full hunter. It was probably a combination of the both because most meat eating animals today aren't strictly one or the other. They won't pass up a free dead meal, but also they'll happily hunt food when they can. So we have the knee joint right here. Remember, you can wrinkle it up because that's a very high area of articulation, like your elbow joint for the dinosaur. Also, you know, it can decorate there. You could wrinkle up the leg as well. Um, I like to give it some muscle definition. Um, I know muscles are very, they're hard to learn, but once you do learn them, I like to kind of define some of where the common muscles would be, which are kind of darker lines like this. I won't go too deep into that because it took me a long time to learn that, even with YouTube videos. So don't worry about that if you don't get it. Okay, let's move down the leg. And we're gonna draw some feature scales in the foot. We know T-Rex and other theropods have these feature scales. So these feature scales would look basically like a bird foot. You have these big scoops on it. So let's draw that. So just like a bird foot. And we don't quite know why they had these scoots. Um, they seem to have evolved multiple different times in dinosaur evolution. Who knows, maybe it protected the foot during walking through the forest or something. We don't know. <laughs> so scoots are done. The leg is mostly done. Again, you could detail this as much as you want or as little as you want. It depends on you as a person, it's okay. And for the tail, same thing as the other parts of the body, we could add a wrinkle here and some veins maybe, because this was a, an area full of muscle and blood vessels. Um, a lot of uh, reptile owners know that you could find certain veins on the animal to inject medicine into. Dinosaurs probably had very similar looking thick veins. If you were a paleo veterinarian, you'd want to know where those veins are. But I don't think any of us are paleo veterinarians. That's just me though. So let's draw more wrinkles on the top and the bottom because this tail was also really well articulated. Um, Theropod dinosaurs can control the degree of their flop of the tail. So most of the time they kept their tail really stiff and sturdy with ligaments. But if they were sleeping or doing something else, they could curl the tail however they wish. So you could add kind of these, uh, it almost looks like I'm gonna start a circle, right? Around the tail. If I were to continue this wrinkle around the tail, it would look like this. So keep that in mind. This tail was vaguely almost circular. It was teardrop shape if you look at it from the front. So keep drawing it just like this, down the tail. One fun thing I added in my most recent T-Rex drawing, I added these big keratin feature scales on the back of the tail. There was no paleontological evidence they had keratin growth on the back of the tail. But remember I said about how much or how little soft tissue T-Rex had, we don't quite know that yet. And birds today grow really weird things on their bodies that we have no correlate in the bone. Like if you look at a bird skeleton, of like a turkey or something, you wouldn't be able to tell there'd be a waddle there. So there are some liberties you can take with how you customize your dinosaur, and that's okay. So I may I add these kind of similar scoots as the foot, and this was informed. I know it, there's no basis in paleontology for giving it these scoots, but there's a specimen of T-Rex. I forgot its name. These different T-Rex have different names in museums. It was found with I think a third of its tail missing which lets you know that T-Rex weren't only biting each other's faces, but each other's tails and other body parts too. So what if there was some kind of evolutionary pressure to get some protection on that tail? Because it's a very vulnerable part of your body. Remember what I said about the tail, it connects parts of the muscle for the leg. If you lose your tail, you can't walk right, you can't hunt right, and you're dead if you're a T-Rex. So this might be a good reason to give it some armor on the tail. It makes sense to me. Uh, will this change with more evidence? Maybe. And that's the important thing about paleo art and science. It keeps changing throughout the years. That's why a T-Rex from, from 1956, a T-Rex from 1975, a T-Rex from 2000, and a T-Rex from 2020 will look different. And I think that's really cool. 
So if we come back to this again in 2030, after this is all over, T-Rex might look entirely different. Maybe it did have feathers all over the body. Maybe it was hot pink. Maybe it was all sorts of fun colors and things, or maybe it was super boring. We won't know that until we get more fossils. And if you want to be a paleontologist someday or work in this kind of field, go for it and find us more fossils. That's the only way we're going to be able to learn more about these long dead animals. Well, the non-avian dinosaurs are long dead. Remember I said birds are dinosaurs too. And that's very important to remember. Next time you eat a chicken nugget, next time you look at a pigeon in the sky, you're looking at a relative of Tyrannosaurus rex and Triceratops that made it past the extinction event. So the next time someone tells you that dinosaurs are extinct, you could kind of wag your finger at them and go, no, I had chicken tenders for lunch. They're not extinct. I'm full. And so that's basically how I go about drawing a sketch of a Tyrannosaurus rex to get started. Of course, I don't only do sketches. I can take a sketch and go 16 miles with it. But this is a great primer to get you guys started to draw your own dinosaurs. And if you feel confident enough, you can start branching out to new species and groups. There were some really weird dinosaurs out there <laughs> that need more art. So you can do your own degree of Wikipedia diving and find your own weird species to draw and share it. Post on social media, show it to your family and friends, educate people on how these things look because this is the closest I'm gonna get to see on a T-Rex is a drawing or an illustration or a movie. So it's a very cool thing to have. And I guess I'll show what my newest T-Rex looks like after hours and hours of painting, hours and hours of going scale by scale. This is what I end up with, is this version of Tyrannosaurus Rex that can change with science. But right now in the year of 2020, this is what I think Tyrannosaurus Rex looks like according to the science. And it all starts, even this 10 hour painting, it all starts with just a sketch. And I'll, I could share the sketch with you guys as well on the PG Museum social media. Let me show you, so you guys have that as reference. Um, I think we could start answering questions now that people still let people catch up to. Yeah, that's great. Um, that was so awesome. I got so into my own sketch that I almost forgot to monitor the question no, no. in the chat. <laughs> show, yeah. Can I see your sketch? Uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, she looks pretty. Very nice. She looks very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. So let's just get a couple questions um, while people are looking at, uh, you know, finishing up their drawings. Um, yeah, sure. Do you want me to answer those first questions we had? Um, yeah. So why did, you, why did you get into paleo art and what's your favorite dinosaur? Sure. Let's, uh, why did I get in paleo art? Um, I wanted to advance my dinosaur drawings past just drawing dinosaurs, right? A anyone could draw a dinosaur and that's great. But I wanted to take it a, a step further and really look at the science behind how you look at these skeletons and the fossils and the muscles. And it reflects modern day too, because you have to learn about modern animals to learn how to draw a T-Rex properly. So it was a great way to marry science and art together. Scientific illustration is a really crucial, important next step in science communication. It's a very visual, universal language, you know, outside of language barriers. You could just show a person, this is what T-Rex looks like in 2020. Where are those weird things in the back? Oh, those are feathers. And you can go from there. My favorite dinosaur is uh, one called Brachiosaurus. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what she looks like because I recently did one too and near and dear to my heart. Let me see if I can find the illustration of it real quick first. Brach, is this it, Brach poster? There she is. So that, that's my favorite dinosaur. The big long neck sauropod. Sauropods were the long neck, long tail dinosaurs. That uh, if you watch the first Jurassic Park, that's what Dr. Grant is looking at in the first scene. Like, oh my gosh, it's a dinosaur. So that's my favorite species. This awesome 45 foot long Titan. All right. Uh, you're all muted just so we don't have too many voices coming at the same time. Uh, I did practice T-Rex a lot. T-Rex is one of those dinosaurs I feel like <laughs> you kind of need to learn how to draw <laughs> before you become a paleo artist um, because someone loves it and you, and you want to be able to make one happen. And I felt like T-Rex was a good 
primer to show other paleontological uh, concepts like feathers and birds or dinosaurs and other fun things. <clears throat> Favorite clade of dinosaurs um, are actually the ceratopsians. The, the big three horned ones. They're not, they, they all didn't have horns, but are, I recently started a triceratops um, and she is my next project. So that's my favorite group. Clade is a group, an evolutionary group of animals or organisms. And so this triceratops is a ceratopsian, which is what my favorite group of dinosaurs. But my favorite dinosaur overall is Brachiosaurus. Where do I work? I work at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. So the aquarium has a sister uh, organization called Mbari, what I work for. Um, and there I do some fun genetics stuff, environmental DNA, where you can figure out who lives in an area based on what DNA bits you find. Um, have there any been, yes, there have been dinosaur fossils found in California. Not many. So California during the Mesozoic, the, the period of time where dinosaurs were the most dominant, um, was mostly, California was mostly underwater. <laughs> during that period of time, like in an ocean. And only sometimes was it ever exposed to land and therefore exposed to terrestrial dinosaurs. Uh, so we do have some species of duckbill dinosaur. Our state dinosaur was recently named. I'm going to type, type it in the chat. I think that's how you spell it. You had to excuse my spelling, but that's not how you spell it because <laughs> that's all I know about it. It's a duckbill dinosaur, August dinolopus, I think it's called. So yeah, that, that's our state dinosaur. Um, at, at Mbari, I love working there. I've been working there for a year. Uh, yeah, and I think, I don't know if anyone's here that asked questions earlier. We had an inbox to get started, but I'll read those off first before I answer anything else for you guys. If I could find it, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Devlin, do you have those questions from earlier? I do. Um while I pull them up, I did want, so just a quick like shout out or reminder, can you pull up your layer of your drawing, your out, your beginning outlines? Oh shoot, I, I erased it. <laughs> oh, it's gone, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay, uh, when you watch this video later, you can go back to the beginning and where we started to where we are now. So yeah. um, I don't consider myself a an artist being able to draw in any shape or form but following along with shapes and then adding the small details along made it really awesome and easy and I was like whoa look at that I have a dinosaur at the end of this so I just want to let you guys all know because I see a lot of kids on this call like it just start simple and then work your way out um, do you have any other tips artist tips to kids about about drawing and getting into art Sure, yeah. Uh, beyond that, that, that's actually how I started drawing as a kindergartner was, if you look back, they're all just shapes. Like I drew a brachiosaurus with like a circle, like an oval, a triangle for the neck, a triangle for the tail. If you start breaking down other objects in your life, like, you know, cans into cylinders and arms into cylinders, you can start wrapping your head around how shadows and things work too. Um, practice. Just, just draw. That's the I, beyond everything else, even though I can give you, I can give you step by step how to draw to you guys. I can give you everything I know, but you have to work. You have to work out what works for you. Some people won't be good at scientific art in the precision way. Maybe they'll be good at some abstract scientific art, or maybe some cool diagram work. You have to figure out what kind of art works well for yourself, and that can only be found with trial and error. So I draw dinosaurs because I'm good at them. Ask me to draw a horse, I'm out of luck, <laughs> you know? So yeah, just take your time and learn uh, what you like and you don't like and stick to it. Don't give up and then you'll get something awesome someday. Or if not that first day, everything you draw is probably gonna be awesome, but you know. Oh, this um, is a fun, a fun question. Can a T-Rex catch a fish? That was actually one of the, I have the questions now. Uh, that was one of the questions we asked earlier. T-Rex, um, wasn't built for catching fish. There's another kind of dinosaur called Spinosaurus that was well, really well suited for catching fish. Let's, let's pull her up actually while I answer this T-Rex question. So T-Rex um, was built for catching things like Triceratops and those duckbill dinosaurs. This image that's gonna come up on the screen, the Spinosaurus, you could tell she has a long, long face and these big bear claws for catching fish. That, that's clearly what this one was adapted for. 
But because we know modern animals don't stick to just two or three things that they eat, T-Rex probably could have caught fish, maybe in the way like a stork would or like a, a heron by waiting at the water's edge, seeing a fish and diving down with a big head. There were some really big fish back then. So T-Rex would have been plenty happy to catch them if it could. I, I have no doubt that it could, but did it? Maybe not that often. Did Carnotaurus swim with their hands, feet, and both, or both? So I don't have an image of Carnotaurus. This is another meat-eating theropod dinosaur. If you've seen the movie uh, from Disney called Dinosaur from like 2000, I think it was 2001 or something, this was the replacement for a T-Rex. It looked like it. It, it was a, uh, a smaller theropod that had even tinier arms than T-Rex. Not even just relatively tiny, they were, they were just objectively small. So small that, and reduced in size and function that they couldn't bend their elbow. So Carnotaurus was smaller, smaller armed theropod with these big horns out of the eye. Um, I imagine it probably would have avoided water because again, it wasn't adapted like the Spinosaurus was for catching fish and other aquatic prey. But uh, a lot of dinosaurs had air sacs inside of their body. Uh, and this is a structure we see in birds too. Basically, they're full of air, like organs, like a balloon. Uh, helps them breathe, also makes them buoyant. So a carnotaurus might have been able to kind of paddle along with its feet, uh, but probably not gracefully. And let me answer one question before I answer this next one. Uh, how did the dinosaurs go extinct? They didn't. Remember we said earlier, uh, birds today are all descendants of the meat-eating dinosaurs. That's why they look very similar. I don't have a recent drawing of a raptor, but a, a raptor dromaeosaur dinosaur, like the velociraptors in Jurassic Park, are the closest, one of the closest relatives to birds of the dinosaur lineage. So birds persisted after the, after the extinction event, thankfully. That's why we have them today. Um, so dinosaurs are not all extinct. Um, how do they, how do the non-avian dinosaurs go extinct? Uh, the prevailing hypothesis right now is that a, a, a meteor hit the earth in a really cataclysmic, terrible day. It happened so fast. If, if you see, look at some art, some people have drawn like T-Rexes looking up at the sky and there's this big rock hurling towards the planet. They wouldn't have time to even do that. One moment the sky would have been blue, the next it would have been ash and debris and explosions. So this huge rock uh, slammed into the uh, earth. It kicked up debris, tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes. It was apocalypse level events. It was an apocalypse. And so any dinosaurs not killed by those uh, existing things like the volcanoes and tsunamis uh, would have been killed in the ensuing years because all that debris in the sky blocked out the sun. And without sunlight, a lot of the plants died. And those big plant-eating dinosaurs needed a lot of vegetation to stay alive. They couldn't find food. They went extinct. All the big meat-eating dinosaurs who couldn't find food after that also went extinct. Uh, but again, birds and other small dinosaurs being able to burrow and find different sources of food persisted and existed for much longer than that. And, but the birds are the only living dinosaur group. But that said, they're super abundant. I had a question earlier that how many species of dinosaurs are there? Extinct dinosaurs, we have about a thousand, more than a thousand species. Birds today, there, there are thousands of species of birds alive today. So there are probably even more that we don't know of, and probably never will. And dinosaurs did live on every single continent. Um, you might know the word Pangea. If you don't, it's okay. So. Uh, about 300-ish million years ago, all the continents, because continents drift, the tectonic plates drift and move, right? That's how we have earthquakes and volcanoes. They were all smushed together at one point. And that's actually when dinosaurs first evolved was during the, the time when Pangaea was connected. Uh, and so when dinosaurs evolved during then, they were all over the place. And then as it split apart over millions of years, there were still dinosaurs in every single continent, even though the, those continents moved away from each other including Antarctica. I'm gonna type a name, uh, a really cool dinosaur called Cryolophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus, cryo meaning cold, loaf meaning, lophos meaning crested, saurus meaning reptile. Cold crested reptile, found in Antarctica. Was maybe about 
I don't know, 15 to 20 ish feet long. Had this kind of Elvis hairstyle going on with its crest. It was really cool. Look it up. That was found in Antarctica during an expedition. Uh, but you can imagine today, Antarctica, back during the Mesozoic, millions of years ago, wasn't at the South Pole just yet. It was kind of drifting from Australia in a location on the planet where there'd still be forests and sun and rain, but it was still remarkably cold. So this, let, this was actually one of the, well, not one of the first, but a reinforcing data point that lets you know that dinosaurs were warm-blooded, able to survive in all these different climates because they could regulate their body temperature, which isn't like how most other reptiles today exist. Other reptiles like uh, monitor lizards and snakes, they can only live in very warm areas because they can't regulate their body temperature outside a very thin range. But dinosaurs and mammals and birds could. That's how come, that's why they're able to take over the world. Are all dinosaurs dangerous? Well, a lot of birds I know would peck my finger if I ever met them. <laughs> um, but objectively dangerous, no. There, there are a lot of small, maybe docile dinosaurs. Um, the average size of a dinosaur, if I took all the extinct dinosaurs and averaged out their size, was about the size of a pony, you yeah, know, which is fair. But if, you, if I took the average size of all the mammals today, the average size would be a shrew. That just lets you know how big dinosaurs are. But um, no, there were some dinosaurs, uh, I'm gonna type some names in the chat that I think would, might've been nice to people. Dryosaurus, Cynoceropteryx. Um, these were reasonably sized animals, like maybe about the size of a, a, a big dog, um, but not all of them were vicious meat eaters. There were, there were so many different kinds of dinosaurs that we still don't know about. There, there are some really weird ones we're discovering every single year. But uh, no, not all dinosaurs were dangerous, I'd say. They all could defend themselves, probably, yes. But not dangerous in the sense that they'd all want to eat you upon <laughs> you time traveling back to 66 million years ago, you know, despite what the movies might tell you. Awesome. This has been a really great uh, chat and activity. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to keep asking them in the chat and I'll keep an eye on it. Um, I just want to take this time to say thank you, Charles, for spending your Saturday afternoon with us and teaching us um, how to draw a T-Rex. This has uh, been incredible. Um, before everybody starts to take off, if you can raise your hand or wave, if you're ready to find out the answer to our riddle from our earlier activity, um, I'll be sharing that in a second. Uh, awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do it now before I forget. So the riddle, we had a virtual scavenger hunt. It's the very first time I've ever done this. And you were gonna watch videos from our Museum Mondays about rocks and fossils and um, different types of land structures to answer like six questions and then letters from those questions turn into a answer to a riddle. And the riddle was, what is as big as a dinosaur but weighs nothing? If you'd like to guess the answer to that now, or if you know, go ahead and type it in. But if you did the, um, if you did the, the worksheet, you would already know the answer. If you raise your hand <laughs> in the video, I can unmute you if you'd like to share your answer too. Not everybody has the chat function. Ooh, I see some people made dinosaur bones. Awesome. That's so cool. You guys did our dinosaur bone craft. Cloud. Ooh, I like the answer cloud, but the answer is it's shadow. Yeah, it's shadow. It's as big Pretty as a good. dinosaur, but doesn't weigh anything. Awesome job, Pretty all good. of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun Pretty making good. that one. <laughs> Uh, let's see. 
Um, make sure you check out our website for all of our videos. There's plenty more to learn and, and fun crafts to do. I would love to see all of your um, drawings. So be sure you can email me or if you post it on social media, you could tag PG Museum or tag uh, the Paint Paddock because we'd love to see all these wonderful drawings. Um, I had a lot of fun with mine as well. Do you have anything you want to add, Charles? I, I loved being here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, showing up on your Saturday as well. I know during these trying times, it's hard to connect with nature and all things dead and undead, but thanks for staying curious. Uh, we have another question. I don't know if we have enough time to do one. Yeah, we have a little bit. Uh, sure, go for it. Where is the, uh, what's your question? So right now we're not sure if we're gonna have Digital Science Saturday for May or if we'll have actual Science Saturday in the museum, but it'll be the last weekend of, last weekend of the month. Um, so yeah, that was, I answered the question. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Digital Science Saturday may or may not happen in May. Uh, it'll be digital if we're still in the shelter in place. Um, and if it's, not a shelter in place order anymore then we'll be having it back at the museum like old times and we're crossing our fingers for it on uh, the chat i see oh oops uh, <laughs> I, was that the actual question then or no uh -oh. yeah that was the the question okay all right thank you guys oh i love that everybody took some time out of their day um i hope you all keep uh drawing oh i got a hand raise so i'm gonna unmute you okay Go for it. Uh, the name is Aries. What's up? Um, it, is a T Rex? Is a Carnotaurus faster than a T Rex? Is a, the question is Is a Carnotaurus faster than a T Rex? Probably yes. I, I think so because it has smaller arms. <laughs> smaller arms and also has much longer relative legs. So Carnotaurus could probably run 20-ish miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Remember we said T-Rex could only run 12 to 15. So Carnotaurus. a race car. <laughs> Maybe not faster than a race car, but yeah, pretty fast. I could take a couple more hand raises if you want to ask questions. All right, I'm going to unmute you. All right, the name is Kieto. Now, this, this, I don't know what happened, but this is just, like, okay, never mind. Um, how many years ago this dinosaur made? Uh, made, or how, how long ago did they exist? Like, how long ago did all of the dinosaurs were born, or something? Okay, so dinosaurs have been around since about 250-ish million years ago. So that's a long time ago, but that's about when they started to show up was about 250 million years ago and they exist all the way till today. Is the dinosaur the first um, creature? No, dinosaurs were not the first animal to ever exist. No, scientists still don't know what the first one was, but it was a much longer period of time before dinosaurs like a billion years ago was maybe when the first living thing existed, but that's, we don't know yet. Okay. Thank you. Maybe, maybe you'll find it. Maybe you'll find it. <laughs> I hope we find it. Okay, thank you. Uh, incredible feat for science for us to discover the very first dinosaur. Oh, that would make me sleep better at night, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and organisms, yeah, I think it would be really cool. All right, we are we have been enjoying this for over an hour. I think we should come to an end. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Charles, again. Um, please check out the PG Museum website for more information. I'll throw my email in the chat one more time if you guys need to reach out to me um, for questions or, or anything else. All right. Thank you, everybody. Hey guys. Have a good day, guys. Bye.